In this lesson, we're going to talk more about word problems. Recap. A relation is quadratic if the graph is a parabola, or sometimes you'll only see part of a parabola. That's going to happen today. The equation has x squared in it, or it has two x's. That's how you can tell if it's quadratic. Or the second differences are constant. So you can tell by looking at the graph if it's quadratic, the equation, or if you have a table of values, you can look at the second differences. So that, those are ways to tell if a relation is quadratic. Example one, look at that lovely animation I did there. The path of a ball that was thrown in the air is modeled by the graph below. The y values represent the height of the ball in meters, and the x values represent the horizontal distance in meters that the ball has traveled. So this is like, this is the ground down here. You're, this is the ground, and this is the distance the ball is going up, as well as the distance the ball is moving horizontally. What was the maximum height reached by the ball? So that's called the vertex, right? Maximum height is right there. That point right there is the maximum height. So let's label that. What do you think the coordinate is there of that maximum height? Well, the x value is a 10 at the vertex. And what's the y value? That's a 9. So the maximum height the ball reached, that's this number, not this number. The maximum height reached, that's my y, so that's my second value. So the maximum height reached is 9 meters. And how far had the ball traveled horizontally to reach this maximum height? So now I'm looking for the horizontal distance. That's my x value, so that's 10 meters. So that means when the ball had traveled 10 meters in this direction, it was up as high as it was going to get. Part C says, what horizontal distance did the ball travel before it hit the ground? So here's my horizontal distance. When it hit the ground, what was its height? What's a ball's height when it hits the ground? The height is zero. So I, I'm not looking for when the height is three meters or two meters, I wanna know when it's one meter. So I go all the way across here, right here at this blue dot, that is where, and let me label it, that coordinate is 21, oops, yeah, 21, I think, and zero. So the horizontal distance, it was 21 meters horizontally when the ball hit the ground. 21, whoop, I wrote that in the wrong spot. Sorry, erase that. Um, at part C, what distance did it travel before it hit the ground? It, it, it traveled 21 meters horizontally before it hit the ground. Part D, what was the initial height of the ball? The initial height. Okay, so when was the ball actually hit by the baseball bat? What was the initial height of the ball? So it wasn't, didn't start on the ground, the ball. It started up a little higher. It looked like it started at about one and a half meters. So that coordinate, that has zero horizontal distance. It hasn't traveled sideways at all yet. It's only uh, starting at 1.5. So what was the initial height of the ball? 1.5 meters was the initial height. So here's an interesting question. If the person throwing the ball was trying to get it over a tree that was 16 meters away from him, I would say it's not throwing the ball, but probably hitting the ball, the person hitting the ball, was trying to get it over a tree that was 16 meters away from him and the tree is five meters tall, did the ball pass over the top of the tree? Hmm. So let's, uh, we're gonna assume we're talking about the person that's hitting the ball here. Here's the person hitting the ball, there's the bat, they hit the ball. Oh, no, sorry, the ball is thrown. My mistake, it's not hit, doesn't say it was hit, it says it was thrown. So the ball is thrown, they're throwing the ball, and they're trying to get it over a tree that was 16 meters away. So the tree is here, here's the tree. Let's draw a little tree here. And the tree is five meters tall, so I've got to draw it. Here's my tree, right? That's my tree right there. Let me draw a little quick tree. Here's my tree and six, uh, 16 meters away. Yeah. So there's my 
bottom of my tree. And there's my tree 16 meters away. And it's five meters tall. So the very tip of this, the coordinate right here at the top of the tree is 16, five. So the person throwing the ball was trying to get it over a tree that was 16 meters away from him. And the tree is five meters tall. Did the ball pass over the top of the tree? It sure did. Right, this line, this path of the ball, so the ball's thrown up and comes back down again, and it, according to this path, it does not hit the tree. So it goes, when it's 16 meters away, it's well above the height of the tree. So does the ball pass over the top of the tree? Yes. The ball misses the tree. Misses the tree. And F, how far from the thrower could a 1.6 meter tall person stand and not get hit by the ball? Okay, 1.6 meter tall person. Now remember that the initial height of the ball was 1.5 meters. The person throwing the ball is holding it in their hand at 1.5 meters away. So obviously if this person is standing right in front of them, they're going to get hit by the ball. They're going to have to back up a little bit. If they're 1.6 meters tall, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line through 1.6. So 1.6 is just over 1.5. It's right here. So really, they don't need to stand too far away. Let's say um, it was a, a three meter person, which is ridiculous. People aren't three meters tall. If it was a three meter person, they would have to stand. I would go down for the where it hits the graph and say, well, they would have to stand, pretend that's a straight line, say one meter away. But the 1.6 meter tall person does not have to stand that far away. So certainly if the 1.6 meter tall person even stood one meter away, they would not get hit by the ball. So we've got, if the person stands one meter away, he or she won't get hit, but then can he stand or she stand as far away as they want? No, because they'll get hit if they stand over here too, that person. So there's two places. They'll get hit if they stand too close to the thrower, but they'll also get hit if they stand. So I'm going to draw my my 1.6 line kind of across here. That's maybe a bit high. So right there. So if they're standing there, they're going to get hit. They're going to get hit again. Um, so we would say they would get hit if they stand one between one meter away. And what does that look like there? It looks like it's about 20 meters away. So if they, if they stand one meter away, between one meter and 20 meters, they're not going to get hit. So up to about 20 meters away from the thrower. They are safe, they won't get hit. And then of course, if they stood anywhere in here, they would get hit, but just in between the ball's path, they, they're safe in between the path in this space here. Example two, this is a big one. Ticketmasters knows from years of experience that if they charge $40 for a concert ticket, they can expect an attendance of 8,000 people. So they already have figured this out. The revenue, that's the money they make from this concert price would be $40 times 8,000 tickets would be $320,000. So if they charge $40 for a ticket, they know they're gonna sell $8,000. So it's very common to have people in marketing who try to see, well, can we charge more? We'd like to make more money. Can we charge more money? Well, if you charge more money, you may not sell as many tickets. Ticketmasters conducts an experiment and finds out if they raise the price of their tickets by $1, the number of people who will buy a ticket will drop by 150 tickets. So they would have sold 8,000 tickets, but that will drop to 7,850 tickets. And instead of charging $40, they'll, ch they'll charge $41. Now, is that gonna make more money than this? Well, let's see. We're gonna complete the table below for tickets costing up to $52. So we've got this whole price of tickets already done here. We already know the first one, $40 a ticket, 
you get 8,000 people coming, multiply those two numbers together, you get, that's how we got that up here, we got $320,000. So what if they charge $41 for a ticket? Well, then they're going to lose 150 people. So their attendance, that's this column here, their attendance is now down to 7,850. 7, so what's that, what are they going to make? What's the revenue they're going to make? And here's a formula, price times attendance. So we, we take the price of the ticket, that's $41. We multiply it by the number of people coming, and we get $321,850. So it actually went up. Right, it went up. They made more money. Even though they sold fewer tickets, they made more money. So how high can we go with that, do you think? How, how much longer can they keep charging more money and still making more money? Let's see what happens. So we go to $42 a ticket. That means they're down another 150 people. Another 150 aren't going to buy because they raised it another dollar. So now they're down to 7,700 people. So how much money are they making now? So we're going to take 7,700 and multiply it by 42. It's still gone up. They're still making more money. That's a nice increase there. They're making more money. What about if they bring it up another dollar? They've lost another 150 people in their attendance. Now what's the revenue? So revenue is price times the attendance, right? So 43 times 7,750. Remember, we're going to subtract 150 each time. That's how we're getting this number right here. You know what? Let's just do all of these right now. This is a this is an easy step. So let's keep let's just do subtract 150, and let's fill in this columns once we have one mathematical process. Let's just keep doing that. It's a little faster. Just subtract 150, keep filling them in. Subtract 150, keep filling them in. Subtract 150 because every time we increase the price ticket, the price of the ticket by a dollar, we're losing 150 sales. So this is coming down and we charge $52 a ticket. We've only got 6,200 people in attendance. So you would think we're going to be making lots of money here. Ticketmaster is going to be making lots of money because they're charging $52 a ticket instead of $40 a ticket, but they're selling to a lot fewer people. So let's go back and look at the revenue. So remember what we're doing here. We're taking the attendance, which was 7,550. We're multiplying it by our new price of ticket, which is $43, and the number is still getting higher. So we do it again. We take now the lower attendance, multiply it by $44, and it's still getting higher. So let's do this whole column here, and we do that by multiplying the first two numbers together. We're just multiplying these two numbers together each time to get our new answer in here. So we just keep multiplying, so that number is higher. This number is higher, we're 326,000 now. This is just slightly higher though. Between these two numbers, we've only got another $50. So we we lost another 150 people here, charged another dollar for a ticket, but we've only, we're still it's still a good number. That's a lot of money considering we started off with $320,000 for a concert with $326,650 now. But that number is a little lower. Okay, so we've kind of reached a point where people, where the more money we're charging is not paying off anymore because that number's gone down. So continue to multiply those first two numbers together and we see that it's coming down and still coming down. So we're charging $50 a ticket, but our, we're not making as much money. $51 a ticket, still coming down. $52 a ticket, it's still coming down. So let's see if we can make sense of all of this data here. We're going to plot revenue, those are these numbers, versus ticket price, that's these numbers here. So which one goes where? On the x-axis, what are we going to put on the x-axis? We're going to put our ticket price down here. Ticket price is going to go down there. I'll write that in. Okay, ticket price, and now What's going to go on our vertical axis, which is our dependent? The revenue, because the revenue depends on the ticket price. 
the amount of money we can make here with Ticketmasters depends totally on how much we're charging for the tickets. So this is going to be revenue up here. Oh, it's very hard to write sideways. Okay, there's revenue. So let's now get some uh, values for our independent axis, for our x-axis. Ticket price, we've got numbers from 40 to 52. Since I'm not starting at zero, I have to compress my graph and put that little zigzag thing in down here. So I'm going to kind of do a little, a little uh, compression thing there to show that I'm squeezing in the bottom part. I'm going to start at 40. So my first number, actually I'm going to be a bit crowded, I'm just going to move that over there. That's going to be my 40. And I can count by ones all the way up to 52, but not to be too crowded, I will not write every single one because I won't be able to read it. All right, now how about the revenue? So you got to look here for your biggest number and your smallest number so that we know how these were in order, so that was easy. But what's my lowest number here? The lowest revenue number that I have is $320,000. That's my lowest number. What's the highest number? The highest number is right here, 326,650. So I have to be able to fit all of the numbers on there. I'm certainly not going to start at zero. I'm going to again compress the graph. I'm going to put a little zigzag thing down here and then I'm going to start at $320,000. So there is my first number, my low number, 320,000. I have to get up, up this high, which is say $327,000. So I'm gonna, I could just count by ones, 320, 321, 322, 23. I think I'm gonna count by 500s here just to spread it out a little bit. And I'm probably gonna get crowded with my title there. I might need to move that. So let me just put my next one on. I'm going to skip. So instead of putting 325,000 here, I'm gonna skip and put 300 and whoops sorry I said 325,000 and 320,500 so I'm going to go to 321,000 right here skip but counting by 500s 322,000 and so on all right, I've got my y-axis scale on, and I've got to plot my points. So remember how the points go. The ticket price is first, so this is my x, and this is my y. So my first point is 40 and 320,000. So we put a dot right there. Next one is 41, and so these ones are really, this number is really hard. I know I'm not going to put it in the right spot, but I'm just going to try to be close. So it's 321,000. It's almost 322,000. So I'm going up the 41 and I'm going to about, about here. That looks good. So just kind of estimate where you think it should go. And I'm going to put all the rest of mine on and I suggest you press pause and do yours as well. So there we go. A nice parabolic shape of points, of data points here. Um, we're going to, uh, it doesn't actually say to connect the points with the curve, but usually that's the next step. So we are gonna connect them with a the curve and we don't have a full, it doesn't come down, we don't have all the points. And I think in your homework, you have a question very similar to this, but, but you're missing even more spots here. So sometimes you only get part of a parabola and that was on your front screen, but as long as you can tell that it's a parabolic shape, that it's this kind of U shape, then you know it's going to be quadratic. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to start here and I'm going to just connect the dots up to here. So that, I just want to point out if you're, I don't know if you're trying to graph this along with me, if you're trying to do the question, that took me a while to get all those points on. So if it took you a while as well, if you had to press pause for like several minutes to get them on, of course, because these are hard numbers to find on, on a scale like this. So don't worry about it if that took you a while. It did take me a while as well. So we're, there we've got revenue versus ticket price. That was part B right there. Part C, 
what price would generate the most revenue? So if this is revenue, the most revenue I'm looking to figure out, say I'm working in the marketing department for Ticketmasters and I want to help them make as much money as they can. Well, it looks like the most money they can make is, um, is way up here, right? What price though, what ticket price would get us there? The biggest number we got was this number here. 326,650. That was our biggest number. And we got that from selling 47 tickets. So that was actually the highest that we have. Now, if you were doing this on a graphing calculator, or if you knew how to write an equation, which we'll get to later, you would see that there's, there's actually a number that's a little bit higher than that. But, but because we're only increasing by $1 increments, the actual best price would be $46.67. But you don't need to know that. I'm just giving you that information. We, as far as what we can tell, is that selling the price of a ticket for charging $47, that's that our best sales price that we can write. So we're going to write a little sentence for that here. Charging $47 per ticket will generate the most revenue. And what is the total revenue? So that's the other number here. Just make sure you're reading questions thoroughly when you're doing your homework. This says what price would get the most revenue. That's this number. And now what total revenue would this generate? That's this number here. So we already have that in the chart. I don't need to try to figure out from the graph because I already have it right here. $47. If I charge $47, this is my maximum revenue right here. So $47, let me circle that. $47 gets me my maximum revenue. The maximum revenue would be $326,650. That's your final example on uh, word problems. So what we did today was we talked about what if you're just given either given a graph or given a given some sentences and from the information you have to come up with a table of values and a graph. So that's what we worked on today.